Hey, this is Eric from Cafe Watercolor. Thank you for joining me in this new painting video. Let's just jump into it. So this week I'm going to share a process of a portrait painting. This is Natalie. She is my friend from Instagram and I asked her to take a few photos for me. I have her sit next to the window so she gets some gray, beautiful natural lighting that will lit up her face very nicely. And I just have her sit and have some quarter view of her. So this is a very sort of a classic pose and classic angle of a portrait. So for the drawing for this particular portrait, because she has such a nice facial structure, so I am taking my time to really get the facial structure down. It is very important to understand some basic of the structure of the face if you want to have a nice looking three dimensional looking portrait. Now there are different ways to approach a head drawing or a head painting. There are people who try to draw grids on the photo reference and the drawing itself try to match every little nuances within a two dimensional space. That to me isn't a very good way to learn how to do a head drawing or a portrait drawing. Because to me, the goal is always to create this three-dimensionality on a two-dimensional surface. So if you analyze the structure of the face and get that three-dimensional quality out by drawing out the structure, by studying the structure of the face, then you will be able to paint out a three-dimensional looking portrait. But if you are using the grid trying to match the photo one-to-one -one like that, then to me, you are still copying just a two-dimensional shape instead of analyzing the three-dimensional structure. So there's a little bit different on that. So your understanding of the face, the facial structure, and when it comes to lighting and everything, it's going to be a little bit off and not as three-dimensional as it could be. Now, I am not disavow any other ways to approach a drawing. Everybody has different way to work. Just for me personally, I believe to study and learn the structure of the face is very important if you want to have a good, solid, three-dimensional looking portrait. That being said, head drawing itself works its own course, so I'm not able to go through everything right now. But if you want to get started on that, I highly recommend the book by Andrew Loomis. It's recommended by so many different artists. I use it when I was in art school. It is a very, very nice book. So if you're interested in learning about the structure of the face, how to draw the face three-dimensionally, I highly recommend this book and if you're interested, I am going to put the link down below and you can go check it out. So I'm pretty much done with the head drawing. And as you can see, I really try to get the structure of the face down. I am, however, not so good when it comes to getting the likeness down. If I want to do that, I really need to spend extra time to check every single little detail and trying to get the placement almost dead on and it is a little bit hard for me to do i will probably have to put the reference right next to my paper and try to check it like one to one so that's a little bit difficult for me So I mostly just want to get the structure of the face down. And if I happen to capture the likeness somehow, then great. But that's not really the whole focus of this portrait. So what I'm doing right now is to start to draw a little bit harder. So we get some darker lines. So those are going to be the anchor point of my portrait. So there is quite a bit of loose lighter construction lines underneath so now i'm using my needed eraser and start to erase those so only the darker anchor points will remain so those will act as a guide when i am doing my painting so just because when i start painting the drawing seems really simple doesn't mean that the saw behind it is very simple the construction line is pretty much gone but I have the structure down and I'm going to paint with the structures in mind. 
So in this particular portrait, I decided not to do an overall first wash and instead just trying to go for the middle value first. So I start with the eyebrow and connect that to the eye socket and going to paint the eye right away. So I'm using a almost dry brush to soften some of the edges. And now I start to paint the upper eyelid. And I do that while it is still a little bit damp. So make sure your mixture is nice and dry. If you make it too watery, it's very easy for the water to seep back in and create those cauliflower edges. And try to minimize your brush stroke. You don't want to have a lot of dabbings when it comes to painting portraits. Painting anything really, like keep dabbing for little shape, little marks, is never really a good idea, especially for watercolor. You really want to keep that fluidity when it comes to painting watercolor. So as I'm painting right now, I'm also thinking about the structure of the face. So every brush stroke, I am trying to define the three-dimensional plane of this face. So when I'm looking at a photo, when I'm studying the value, I'm not studying in terms of the two-dimensional shape. I'm not trying to copy the two-dimensional shape from the photo. I'm trying to paint and define the three-dimensional plane of the face. So that's the difference and that is very important. So like the side of the upper eyelid, there is a plane. So I make a mark there and I can soften that a little bit just so that it can help the form to look like it's turning. But it's important to know there's different planes on the face. So I'm trying to connect the shape so next to the nose is a very soft cast shadow from the nose. But I connect that to the underplane of the nose. So I'm just keeping that simple. If you look at the photo, the underplane of the nose, there's a little bit of details, some bounce light and some dark and some light. But I simplified it into a simple underplane of the nose. So I'm not worried about things like nostril and stuff. Now I soften the edge a little bit so that the nose doesn't look that harsh with a little bit of transition from light to dark. Now I'm painting the lip. So since the light is from outside, from her side and a little bit up, the upper lip is receiving less light so it's darker than the lower lip. And for the lower lip, the right side and the bottom is darker. It's because where the direction of the light is. And as we do that, we connect the shape as well. Putting some drier, darker mixture on the corner of the lip and a little bit at the bottom of the lip just to bring a little bit more form into it. Now I'm mixing a little bit of carmine for the pink and I'm doing one stroke here. That's going to be the cheek, the cheekbone area. So if we remember when we draw the structure of the face, there is a plane change there. So the upper part is receiving the light and the side is receiving less light. It's still in the light, but a little bit less. So when you understand the structure of the face, you're not just painting what you see, but also what you know. You know there's a structure there, so you can enhance some part of the structure or you can neglect some of it so understanding your subject, understanding the structure will make your portrait very, very different. Actually, in any subject, the more you understand your subject, the more convincing and believable your painting is going to be. It's very important because sometimes when I'm looking at the students trying to paint portrait, they don't have proper understanding of the structure of the face. So they are just trying to copy what they see. That can result into a flat looking portrait, flat looking head. And it's not because they're not doing a good job trying to copy what they see, but it's the lack of understanding. So they are not able to make their own decision when it comes to describing and interpret the form and the structure they see. So I'm painting the hair out. 
So this is the first wash of the hair, so I keep it mostly pretty light. We can darken some of the areas, give it some more detail later. This also gives me a little bit of break because painting all the forms and structures on the face can be a little bit draining because I really need to be careful and focus on what I'm painting. So painting the hair just fill out the color a little bit, kind of help me and give me a little bit of break. So you can already start to see the form and now I just need to push the value range a little bit more by adding a little bit more dark. So adding nostril and there's also a plane over here. So we make it a little bit darker. But also we use that value and bring that down, merge that to the cast shadow from the nose. And notice that I leave a hard edge on her philtrum because there's a very clear plane and structural change. So I don't try to soften that. Even though in real life, there's still a little bit of transition, but we don't always need that. Sometimes I see students try to soften everything too much and they are starting to scrubbing and trying to blend everything together. And the face looks like a mush and if you blend too much, your painting looks dirty. I made a video on how I mix my skin tone. You guys can go check that out. And in that video, I mentioned that it's not really about the color that you use that makes your skin tone muddy. Sometimes it is because you try to do too many layers. You try to blend too much. You try to soften everything. So don't over soften. So at her chin, I do soften a little bit just to give it a little bit softer transition. But you can see like the upper lip and some part of the nose that I don't really soften all that much. So now I give her forehead side plane a little bit of value. And it's not because that part is actually darker, it's because I want to give it a little bit of differentiation between the planes of her forehead. So that way it will look a little bit more three-dimensional. Now I start to add some dark into her iris, paint the pupil. Because her eye is a really prominent shape, so we do want to enhance that a little bit more. And then we just bring that dark value out and define the upper eyelid a little bit more. I'm also painting the crease of her eyelid. She got this very nice double eyelid. And I also start to make some part of the shadow darker as well. So like I said, I'm starting to push the value range. One thing you do need to remember is that watercolor dry lighter. So it might look pretty dark when you lay down that wash, but as it dry, it start to become lighter. So there are certain part you might need to go back and darken it. So I start to darken the ear, give it a little bit more detail, the helix and anti-helix. And now I think the face has a pretty good value range. It's time to darken the hair to really push that light from her face. Now I do need to be a little bit careful to preserve the nice silhouette of her face. So give it a nice clean dark wash. And also bring that dark hair value out into her neck. And one thing I do want you to remember is that even though we're trying to get it right in the first time, but try to slow down a little bit when you start to paint some strokes. Don't just rush through it. Really think about where you need to lay down your stroke. Where does it start and where does it end? I'm also painting the other side of the hair. Get some more dark there as well. And it's amazing that when you add some dark to the hair, the whole portrait feels a lot more alive. There's some dark value for the portrait to anchor down and the face just pops. 
So the dark hair behind her neck, I try to bring that dark value in just a little bit, but give it in a little bit of transition tone, wet onto wet. So it has a little bit of soft transition instead of a hard cut. Now I start to do a little bit of glazing in between the light and the dark value, just so that we can have a little bit of transition tone. So the face doesn't look so white and light. So I'm painting a value to the forehead and down to the bridge of her nose. And I soften some edges and I just continue down to her nose. Make sure the tip is a little bit redder. So by that shape, we added another plane for the nose. So the nose start to look a little bit more structural and three dimensional. So adding a little bit of muscle structure on the wing of the nose. Now here I try to add another side plane of the eye, but I feel that it's too dark, so I just press it out with a paper towel. Now I'm trying to make the crease of the eyelid a little bit darker and also merge that shape to the upper eyelid. So a couple areas I want to enhance the structure. So from the brow bone to the eye socket, those part I want to make it a little bit darker. So here I try to add another plane to the forehead on the side. I try to paint a little bit more hair. So I'm quite happy with how the portrait is going right now. The structure is all there, so I'm taking a little bit of break and start to paint her sweater. Now her sweater is definitely not the focus of the painting, so I'm keeping it pretty loose. Just try to feel the color right now. And after it's dry, we can come back in and add some folds and creases, a little bit detail, giving it some forms of the sweater. So the painting is about 80% done. And this is a stage that you really need to be careful not to overwork it. Where do you need to add a little bit more, but where do you want to leave it alone? I think one of the very tricky thing about doing watercolor is learning when to stop. So when you starting to like your painting, Maybe that is time that you need to wrap it up and without doing some more. Sometimes you make a few marks and you think that looks good, so you want to do more and you start to overwork it very, very easily. And an overwork painting never look fresh. The more you work on the painting, the less fresh it gets. And that's a hard pill to swallow sometimes because sometimes when you don't have a successful painting, you think, add some more detail or add some more dark shape that might fix the painting. And it happens to me over and over again. And I just cannot accept the defeat of a unsuccessful painting. So I try to paint some more and it just make it worse. So a lot of time you, when you don't have a successful painting, you just accept the failure and start again. Accepting failure is an essential part of being an artist when you try to learn to do better painting. And I fail a lot of times actually. So I've been doing a lot of portraits lately and this is the one that I'm actually happy with. There are probably three to four paintings that I just throw it away because they are not successful. So again, embrace your failure. That's going to help you grow. Now you don't need to share any of your failed painting. You don't really have to. So nobody's going to know. You just keep doing it. So I give some loose suggestions on her sweater. And I think it's time to wrap up the painting. The neck jump out a little bit too much. So I give it a glaze and darken that highlight over there. I was trying to bring out the neck muscle structure, but it's a little bit too strong. So trying to finishing up her upper body, but her body is not the focus of the painting. So I just loosely indicate those. As long as there is some form reads, it should be fine. 
here I come back the next day and I look at the painting again, see where I need to kind of enhance. So the nose, there's a darker plane that I want to enhance that a little bit just to make it a little bit more dimensional. And the bridge of the nose, I want to give a little bit of a transition tone. So just a couple areas that I want to give a little bit more punches and that's it. So the bottom of the chin, get some more shadow in. And again, that's due to what I call the dry lighter and I'm using Saunders water for, it's very absorbent. I feel like Saunders paper, even though it's very easy to work on those paper, the color dry quite light. So I, a lot of time I need to come back and darken some parts. And now I'm using the white gouache. The bridge of the nose seems a little bit too white that plane. So I give it a stroke to fix the shape of the nose and we are finished. I hope you like this demo and this painting. I do think I achieved the goal that I want, which is a three dimensional looking portrait that emphasizes the structure of the face. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. Also go to my website to sign up for a free watercolor PDF guide. This is Eric from Cafe Watercolor. I will see you next time.